Hi there. Today on Typical Books, we're going to be talking about what I'm reading for Halloween. I know it's pretty late in the month. Ten days really to go, uh, more or less, before the All Hallowed Eve. And before I get to scary stories to tell in the dark, which you might have seen in the thumbnail photo, if I put it in the thumbnail photo, I want to talk about Richard Lehman's Night in the Lonesome October. This is no doubt on every extreme horror fans list for October. and. I mean, without explanation. Night in the Lonesome October is one of his better books from what I understand. It depends on who you're asking though. There are a lot of people that don't dig Richard Lehman. One person that digs Richard Lehman is the composer next door. Go and check out their channel because I had noticed, we had noticed each other more than likely because we both did huge Richard Lehman hauls. Now we review a lot of different kinds of books and read really widely, but you know what? You wanna see a really cool channel go check them out. And thank you so much for sending along Chariots of the Gods by Eric Von Daniken. Uh, it was a bit of a male game we had to play because I don't live in the US. But yeah, a really wonderful, wonderful book to have in my collection. I'm very, very pleased. So thanks again. But yeah, Richard Lehman. This book will be on a lot of people's reading lists. I haven't read it in quite some time, and you know I've been trying to get to a lot of my Richard Lehman books. I'm not reading them in order either, but this will be an October read, and I know I will fly through it. So I have every intention of getting through this well before Halloween and before the rest of the books on this list. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark and more Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. I was going to reread The Halloween Tree this year like so many people do, but I haven't read these in so long. I have the reprints and I had had and read these when I was young. I didn't buy Scholastic books very often at all, maybe once <laughs> when I was young, unlike most other people who collected them. And this came from a friend of a friend, a roommate's friend, Aaron, who had uh, graduated. He got his PhD, I believe. And I guess he was culling books because he's moving like a lot of people do after school and knew that I was a big horror fan and had enjoyed my writing. So he gifted these to me and I've been so grateful since because these are from a childhood collection and I am still a child. So I'm pretty pleased. I haven't read them in a long time, so I'll be really happy to revisit these. And knowing that they're pretty quick little reads, it won't really impede me, I don't think, before we get to the thicker books. Now, those who have watched this channel before know I have said I'm going to reread Blood Sugar by Daniel Krauss every year for Halloween because it's just so perfect for me. It may not be perfect for everybody else, though, but I highly recommend Blood Sugar. Have you been looking for a new Halloween read that isn't the same old, same old? Are you tired of your ooky spooky nostalgic picks? Well, look no further. Don't let the cover fool you. It is so very perfectly Halloweeny, and it looks like it's going to be that perfect little um, whimsical Halloween romp or a scary book, you know, like Trick or Treat, but in book form by R Michael Doherty's film Trick or Treat. That's a scary, whimsical Halloween story. And this takes place in a city as well, but it's the inner city. And these kids have befriended over the years this much older than them uh, crime and street involved person who may be squatting in his house, I'm not sure. Um, and that is scary in and of itself. But he is the only person these kids really have to turn to. They're very neglected latchkey type kids and who knows much about their home lives because we don't hear much about that. We hear about how excited they are for Halloween and how they're gearing up. And it is so out of the ordinary. If you're tired of the white picket fence and leaves gently blowing down Elm Street and Haddonfield kind of Halloween, then boy does Daniel Krauss have something for you. I had not read anything by Daniel Krauss when this first came out and it came from Hard Case Crimes. So I knew I liked Joyland by Stephen King. I didn't know what to expect from this. Priscilla Bettis had recommended it. She'd read it and I really do value her recommendations because she reads so widely and really has a great taste in horror. So yeah, I had looked forward to it and was blown away. It is so out of the ordinary though. And I vowed then that it would be my Halloween read because it's so very me and it's so out of the ordinary. And it reminds you that not everyone is as lucky to be carving pumpkins gently on your doorstep as the 
flocks of children giggle past. Now that is really about what I should be reading. That should be the end of my list, but you know what? I'm gonna tack one great big honking book. Along About Midnight by Dorian J. Sinat caught my eye. And you can probably see why. The cover is gorgeous. I absolutely love the cover and I mentioned it when I talked about all the books coming out in October and I couldn't pass it up. The cover really spoke to me and that it takes place leading up to Halloween in October. Like every small town, Oak Ridge has its secrets, legends. When October falls, Peter Harlow and his friends seek to uncover them at the Chapel Hill Cemetery surrounded by jack-o'-lanterns at midnight. But what starts off as a fun scare for the season turns into something far more than they bargained for. You can see how this has caught my eye. When children go missing and a mysterious cat follows them home, Peter starts losing sleep, spiraling from tormenting nightmares, and soon he realizes there's much more to the stories than it was passed down. Truth within fiction. As Halloween draws nearer, so does the darkness looking to claim its next victim, and sometimes secrets are better left buried. Or sometimes dead is better, as some would say. But you can see again how this spoke to me, and I really want to get through it. But then I picked it up, and it got better, because inside there's illustrations. I didn't know that. I don't know if I missed that a credit to the illustrator or something like that in all of my stuff. I noticed right away the frontispiece is illustrated. And then there's little jack-o'-lanterns and flies throughout the ends of each chapter. There's line drawings that I didn't really look at closely and only near the beginning because I don't want anything spoiled. The beginning of each chapter has a very scary cemetery scene that is a charcoal or pencil shaded drawing. And I think it gets more sinister as the book goes on. I haven't really dug in that deep, but I was so pleased to see that this was illustrated and I think that it will be a really fun ride. I have high hopes for this, really high hopes. No Amityville house, pun intended. A graveyard in Halloween, I'm sold. So are you reading any of these for Halloween? I know a lot of people read the Halloween tree. Uh, are you doing that too? Definitely let me know in the comments if you've read any of these really cool books. You may notice that it looks a little different. I've moved the camera around. The dog almost knocked the camera over and I saved it from certain doom not long ago. And I thought, you know, I really have to move this. As much as I enjoy standing up and facing straight on, I thought I'd try something different with the camera a little more out of the way. And maybe a change is good. We'll see, we'll see. Maybe I'll switch back and forth between the two or standing, we don't know, we'll find out. But yes, let me know what you think of this new setup. So as I mentioned, check out The Composer Next Door for ooky spooky fun. For super ooky spooky fun, check out my friend Mary Jane and Kevin's channel. They recently got married. They tied the knot and jumped the broom and all that fun stuff on Friday the 13th of all days. And it was a wonderful ceremony. So check out their channel, Creep Country Cinema. And they do a lot of adventures and travel and really short videos, but also super fun. So definitely check that out. And if you're really stoked about Halloween books, Cameron Chaney over at Library Macabre did like hundreds of books in two videos at least. So check that out. If you want books about Halloween from the master of Halloween himself, definitely check that out. But yes, thank you very much for watching and have an ooky spooky day.